Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for being here. I'm Kelly Colopy. I'm the Director of Health and Human Services for the City of Long Beach. Um, today is our briefing for July 27th, 2020. Uh, the mayor couldn't be with us today, as you know. Um, he lost his mother uh, over the weekend to, due to COVID, and we really uh, we want to offer up our seer con condolences um, to him and all that he is going through right now. She was 61 years old. You know, it's so often that I hear people on either in the media or people who email me and others who start to point to rates of death and, and rates to other things just to say, you know, COVID's not that big of a deal. Why do we have to do all these kinds of things? Um, so I start comparing it to flu because that's what people, to, you know, that's what people compare it to. They say, ah, like the flu, some people die from flu. So we looked it up and, you know, people die from COVID almost every day in the city of Long Beach. There may be a couple days we're not, but generally we lose one, two, three, up to five people every day uh, from COVID. And so if you want to compare that to flu, last year's flu season, we lost one dozen people. So a dozen people from flu last year. 163 this year so far from COVID and the season's not over. So I want people to really understand that COVID is real. What we are fighting is real and what we're asking you to do is real because it is the only way that we can stop uh, the deaths and the illness that is going on across the people that we know and that we love. So just to update you on the numbers, as of today, we had 7,582 residents who tested positive for COVID. That's um, about 5,994 of those people have recovered. That's based on their self-report. But we have lost 163 people across the city of Long Beach. And 118 of those are from our long-term uh, nursing facilities. Um, but we have seen a real stabilization in those spaces. And what we're seeing more is more hospitalizations and more deaths happening uh, within our community. Our current positivity rate is now 10.2%, which is down. It's down four points um, since last week. So we're very happy to report that that is the case. It's something we're tracking on. Uh, the state uh, focus is still at 8%. So we do have work left um, in that space. That is one of the key indicators of the monitoring list you hear so much about. The other is case rates. Uh, so our case rate is up. Uh, approximately 380 per 100,000. And the case rate that we focus on for the state is 100 per 100,000. Uh, that's over 14 days. So we have a lot of work to do, but the numbers are trending in the right direction. And we're seeing some stabilization in our cases. It's just so important that you follow the Safer at Home order. We say this every day, everywhere we can. Maintain at least six feet from your other individuals that are not in your household. Wear a face covering when you are in public. Wash your hands frequently and make sure that you sanitize all the high touch areas. If you keep six feet from each other and you both have face coverings on, the opportunity for transmission is next to zero. But you both have, everybody needs to be following the rules for that to happen. They are simple actions. They might, you know, they might be bothersome time. You might think the mask like helps it so you can't breathe all the time, those kind of things, like it feels a little bit, but that's not nearly what it would feel like if you had uh, COVID-19 or you're losing one of your family members into that space. Also, I'd like to talk a little bit about, uh, or to share with you uh, about our venue task force. I'm, I'm switching subjects. So as part of our effort to keep people safe and make sure businesses are following our safer at home order, uh, we've established our venue task force. So I'd like to introduce today Christopher Kuntz. He's the deputy director of, for development services, and he's here to explain how the venue task force works. Um, and he'll be available at the end to respond to some questions as well. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly, and good afternoon, everyone. Again, I'm Christopher Kuntz from the Development Services Department. I want to talk to you about the Venue Task Force, which is making sure all of us are safe out there um, in the environment. So on March 20th, the city set up the Venue Task Force. It's made up of staff from Code Enforcement, Health and Human Services, Business License, as well as other partners as needed, such as the Police Department or Fire Department. The Venue Task Force is out every day. They do unannounced inspections of businesses that are open throughout our city. So those could be restaurants, those could be uh, other uh, businesses that we're all familiar with and making sure that we not only respond to compliance uh, issues, but upfront and proactively make sure that everyone is following the same rules to keep us safe. Since March, just a few statistics to share with you. Uh, 4,034 businesses have been visited or inspected. Of those, 11 businesses have been cited, meaning uh, there was a formal citation. 
Over 3,000 businesses uh, were in full compliance on their first visit. That's 76% were found to be in compliance on their first visit. Sometimes more work was required, so we start with education and helping the business find a way to comply. By the second visit, over 90% compliance was achieved. In those exceptional cases where the business does not come into compliance, we do take further steps to either bring them into compliance or to close the operation. The task force, as I mentioned, takes a proactive approach to educate businesses about the health orders and protocols affecting their operation. The task force also offers information on Long Beach programs that reduce the risk of COVID and allow our businesses to operate. Those include drive-in dining, also known as car hop, sidewalk dining, and parklets. Sometimes it's necessary, despite all of these efforts, to issue administrative citations or to escalate those citations to a misdemeanor citation if warranted. Residents wishing to report violations and non-compliant businesses are asked to call 562-570-2633, or they can email the task force, which is CET Ask Force, so CE Task Force at longbeach.gov. And business owners and workers that may have questions or need assistance can call the city's business hotline. That's at 562-570-4BIZ, and that's 562-570-4249. And those phones are uh, staffed 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. So with that, I'd like to turn it back over to Kelly for the remainder of the presentation. So I do want to talk a little bit of just about the testing and to remind everybody that we continue to offer free testing for residents of Long Beach and the nearby cities, including Signal Hill, Lakewood, Compton, and Paramount. Um, appointments are required for testing, and they can be made online or by calling 562-570-INFO, uh, which is 562-570-4636. Appointment time slots are available up to three days in advance, and we release 1,200 appointments each day. Um, for, the, for, the, for that time frame. We also have the Rapid Assessment Clinic at the Long Beach City College Pacific Coast Campus, uh, and it does offer walk-up testing for symptomatic patients. So if you are symptomatic and you have not been able to get an appointment, uh, we assess you, and if, if we assess for symptoms, then uh, we provide a test at that time as well. That's available from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on weekdays only. Uh, that rack is available at the PCC campus. Um, individuals that can also receive COVID-19 through your health care provider. And so we en really encourage you if you, uh, are sh if you have symptoms um, or you know that you've been exposed, please get tested uh, to understand, you know, if you've been, if you've been exposed and, and whether you've been infected. And if so, to really make sure that you are following all, all the guidelines within quarantine and isolation practices is just so very important. So with that, I'd like to wrap up and we're open for any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. We have one member of the press today, Valerie from the Long Beach Post. Valerie, go ahead with your question. Hey there. Um, so I have two questions. Um, so one is, um, will you guys be releasing the list of businesses that were cited? And then two, um, with the new testing mandate from the city, some clinics and doctors are concerned that they won't be able to get testing supplies or contracts with labs. Are people going to be able to get tests at their doctors when testing supplies are already hard to get statewide? So I'll answer, I'll answer the second one. I'll let Christopher answer okay. the first one. <laughs> so um, the in terms of supplies and for the new order. So we realize that 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 you know right now that there that there still are some concerns about supplies that is difficult to get. But there are many many more labs coming online that go through the FDA uh, EUE, EUA process, and so more mm -hmm. uh, more access to testing is becoming available. Um, you know, each couple of weeks. And so what we are doing is encouraging providers um, and medical facilities to start to look at some alternate labs and alternate areas. Uh, we are happy to uh, to have conversations with folks and we'll be looking at, at uh, creating an opportunity for some questions and answers and some coordinating about how we can start to move forward to improve testing capacity across the city amongst our medical providers. And the other question was about uh, existing 
um, citations, and we do have that request in from the Long Beach Post, and it's uh, going through legal and other channels internal uh, to the city here to release that information to you um, in the coming days. I don't have that right this minute. Um, I can confirm there was a, a press report about the criminal citation, which was the, the crunch fitness uh, here in the city, but that facility is now closed for the protection of the public. Thank you. And that is it for questions. We will go to our translation now. Buenas tardes y bienvenidos a nuestro comunicado de prensa de hoy lunes 27 de julio del 2020. Nos gustaría comenzar ofreciendo nuestras más sinceras condolencias al alcalde Robert García y toda su familia. El alcalde García anunció hoy que su madre, Gaby, de 61 años, falleció debido a complicaciones de COVID-19. Este es un recordatorio de que COVID-19 es muy real y muy peligroso. Esta enfermedad ha afectado a muchos miembros de nuestra comunidad, tanto directamente como a través de nuestros amigos y seres queridos. Sigamos atentos y hagamos todo lo posible para frenar la propagación de este virus. Descanse en paz, Gaby O'Donnell. Seguimos con datos generales. Hasta hoy, 7,582 residentes han dado positivo por COVID-19. Además, aproximadamente 5,994 personas se han recuperado. Lamentablemente, hemos perdido 163 residentes de la ciudad de Long Beach por COVID-19. De estas muertes, 118 se han asociado con centros de atención a largo plazo. Nuestra tasa de positividad actual es del 10%. 0.2% ha bajado cuatro puntos de la, desde la semana pasada. Como recordatorio, nuestra tasa de positividad es el porcentaje de personas durante un periodo de siete días que dan positivo por COVID-19 dividido por todos los examinados. El criterio de estabilidad del estado es del 8% o menos. Continuemos haciendo su parte y ayude a frenar la propagación del virus y, sigam, y sigamos la orden más seguro en casa. Se le recuerda que si dos personas están usando la mascarilla, tiene casi el 0% porcentaje de contagiarse con el virus. Vamos a recordarles otra vez de mantener al menos seis pies de distancia con otras personas que no son de su hogar. Use uh, la cubierta para la cara cuando esté en público, lávese las manos con frecuencia y desinfecte esas superficies de alto contacto. Estas acciones son simples, pero pueden salvar vidas. Como parte de nuestro esfuerzo para mantener a las personas seguras, la ciudad ha establecido un grupo llamado Venue Task Force para ayudar a hacer inspecciones en la ciudad. Este Venue Task Force fue establecido el 20 de marzo de este año por la ciudad y es compuesta de aproximadamente 20 empleados. Ellos se encargarán de aplicación del código, salud y servicios humanos, uh, licencias comerciales y a veces incluirá otros departamentos, incluyendo el departamento de policía. El grupo de trabajo realizará inspecciones sin previo aviso y responde a las quejas para garantizar el cumplimiento de reglamentos. Desde marzo, un total de 4,034 negocios han sido visitados e inspeccionados y 100 empresas han sido citadas. 3,050 empresas han cumplido en su primer visita y se descubrió que el 76% de ellos cumplen con los códigos y reglamentos. Además, el 90% cumplieron de, um, después de la primera visita. Entonces, se hizo la primera visita, se le recomendó los cambios y a la segunda visita, el 90% sí tenían todo al margen. Uh, también se ofrece información para negocios sobre programas que reducen el riesgo, como el programa para comer al aire y comer en el vehículo. 
A veces es necesario emitir multas administrativas, aunque muy raramente, para reforzar el cumplimiento o una citación de delito menor si se justifica. Los residentes que desean denunciar infracciones y negocios no conforme deben llamar al área 562-570-2633 o enviar un correo electrónico a CET a s k f o r c e arroba longbeach.gov. Los dueños de negocio y trabajadores que necesitan asistencia también deben llamar a la línea directa de negocios de la ciudad a la área 562-570-4249 de lunes a viernes de 8 de la mañana a 5 de la tarde. Ahora sigamos con información sobre las pruebas. Continuamos ofreciendo pruebas gratuitas aquí en la ciudad para los residentes y ciudades cercanas que incluyen Signal Hill, Lakewood, Compton y Paramount. Si requieren citas para pruebas, se pueden hacer en línea o llamando a área 562-570-4636. Seis. Todas las citas están disponibles con hasta tres días de anticipación. Para aquellas personas que tienen síntomas y tienen dificultades agarrando una cita, puede visitar la clínica de evaluación rápida en el campus del colegio Long Beach City College localizado por la Pacific Coast Highway y Orange. Ellos continuarán con las pruebas de detección de pacientes sintomáticos. Esto se ofrecerá de 10 de la mañana a 2 de la tarde, de lunes a viernes. Las personas también pueden recibir la prueba de COVID-19 a través de su proveedor de atención médica. Se recomienda que también aprovechen de esta opción. Para aquellas personas que preguntan si la situación del alcalde afectará nuestra orden de salud, queremos recordarle que la ciudad continúa basando todas sus decisiones en ciencia y datos acumulados. Como recordatorio, nuestros comunicados de prensa son cada lunes y jueves a las 3 de la tarde en vivo. Gracias por acompañarnos. Esto es todo por hoy. As a reminder, our briefings are every Monday and Thursday at 3 p.m. That is all for today, and we thank you for joining us.